Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please abiding by Scatterbirth Plus. We're gonna coalesce, convalesce, and acquiesce after that terrible daily yesterday where I actually, at least at the time of its recording, hmm, Pet X. Who needs Ted X when you got Pet X, man? Zero J Q F. You know what? Money well earned. Um. Yeah, that last run was, like, actually <laughs> extremely bad. We ranked surprisingly okay, considering, you know, the the way that our performance ended there. Um, ooh, the guys. I probably should take it immediately, and I'm gonna take it immediately. Yeah. This is alright, actually. I didn't really th think about the consequences too much of playing that self-sacrifice room. I was just like, dude, we're coming off a run where we had this damage, slightly better DPS, and this HP, like, mere moments ago. So, for me, this is like a... To say that it's a dream come true might be a little bit of a ridiculous statement, but... I mean, we got HP to play around with as far as I'm concerned. A judgment on floor one is not that relevant. I make this mistake every time. You should stand in either the north... Uh, section or the south section there and then you can get three cents instead of two but the important thing is that we got the five which is going to allow us to get an arcade on the next floor and possibly allow us to take advantage of the fact of course that we have uh, a judgment if it's a demon judgment we can play that along with the blood bank to get some uh, extra utility out of them hey stay back wow somehow we didn't get hit all right tinted rock I'm gonna try it. It's a tough call. For one bomb, we get to 15 cents, and that allows us to definitely uh, get something from the shop. There's another tinted rock. Oh, I've, I've messed this one up. Something fierce. Um, we have to. I think at this point, our loyalty, our, our loyalty, our loyalty lies with. Um, Blowing up this Tinted Rock and probably getting a second secret room simultaneously. Maybe we'll get a bomb in there and everything will be for the best, but even if not, we're probably going to be okay with what we get here. We got a bomb already, so that's like, we're off to the races, man. Um, Hagalaz. Relevant. Perthro. Hey, uh, frig off. That was so close. All right, so we got a lot of things to do here. We got Perthro, the Gaz. We'll just pop the Gaz right now because we don't need that long term. Uh, Perthro is fine to take with us, and we're gonna take a Hagalaz. A holiday life. It's a great song though. We're gonna blow this up. Come back here. I didn't. Why not pick up the red heart there? This is a great Hagalaz opportunity. Got another bomb out of it here, and a little bit of money as well. More than enough keys. Oh, you are an idiot. Okay. So, we're going to re-roll this because it's bad. And I'm okay with Dogtooth. Our secret room is definitely here. I think we'll go for it then. We got a modest damage upgrade as a result. That's really the big draw. For now, at least. Secret rooms, once resources are a little richer later... So if we're going to the shop on this floor, we're going to get two luck upgrades. And a couple of consumables that are up to no good. We don't really want King Baby. Rest assured that it's the key challenge will happen at some point, by the way. I <laughs> just... <laughs> I keep alternatively forgetting about it or being like, Eh, you know, I just had a bad daily. I don't want to do the it's the key challenge. I should probably do it before I leave, but... I don't know, man. What, no no roar on this one? We should take Perthrow. Although, what's our other one? Judgment? Judgment? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Try to get something out of Judgment first, and then we can take a... No matter what, we can take a Perthrow down to the next floor. The It's a little bit of a risk, but this is basically what we wanted, I think, is more HP. And then the dream is... And it, it's actually been fulfilled, is that we just managed to have enough... Uh, Money to also get an arcade on the next floor, and really, like, we've we've managed to press a lot of our early game advantages, so... I'm feeling really good about this one so far. It's already better than our last Lilith run. Um, although, our last Lilith run, it... I mean, it's not really a high watermark that we should probably, uh... 
you know, be, t be too proud of being uh, ahead of now. There goes their spear at heart, unfortunately. I've been playing pretty terribly, just walking into enemies for no reason whatsoever. I'll take it. I think it's fine. And we should leave. We could use Perthro to reroll the shop, but we don't have enough money anyway, and we've already found both secret rooms, so I think that our, our best play is probably to leave. So, admittedly, our HP is a lot less relevant if I can't find a deal with the devil as a result of the fact that I don't have any spirit hearts and take some damage. So, we are a little, uh, nervous isn't the right word, but apprehensive. It's a word that doesn't get used that much, I feel, in this day and age, but I like it. It's like anxious without the loaded term, you know? Like, I'm not physically experiencing the symptoms of anxiety as a result of the fact that we're in a little bit of a delicate situation, but at the same time, oh, I recognize that it requires some delicacy and care in this situation. Why is it that the word delicacy is almost always used to describe something gross that's only consumed in, like, one region of Earth? <laughs> I feel like the word delicacy is so beautiful. It's got a soft C and a hard C right next to each other, and it just feels nice coming off the tongue, you know? Delicacy. Doesn't it sound like, uh, you know, it should be said in like an ice cream commercial? A delightful delicacy. From the culinary minds of Briars, introducing Vanilla Swirl. I told you, dude, my exit strategy for YouTube is commercials. I don't I don't care if I have to be the voice in the commercial, I'd like to be the egghead behind the, you know, the brainstorming, but... I'll take what I can get. Um, I think we should explore a little more, just, ah, but we do have a good opportunity to maybe fight this guy and be okay. I, I just want the key, please. Thank you. Um, let's do this first. But instead, it's like, the most commonly described like way to use delicacy is like oh yeah in the Philippines um, congealed duck fetus eggs are a delicacy I can turn the gaze inwards by the way my own country we're probably gonna get hurt here yeah but I think it's okay you should never per throw the d6 wait no no this hold up you should normally never void the D6 because you reroll items before sucking them up. So I think we should say goodbye, D6. It's been fun. I love you. And we'll just take little Brim and continue to take damage as a result, but still. Um, we already have enough speed, so let's try to suck this up. And we actually got a rate of fire increase. If we'd walked on the spikes there, we could have died, which would have been kind of hilarious, to be fair. Um, but there, there are bad Canadian delicacies. People think that this is a joke. It's no joke. It's not like we eat this every day. In fact, I think I've had it like twice in my life. Please. Please. But I have indeed consumed maple syrup dripped on snow. I know that sounds ridiculous. It's, it's a thing. I'm not saying it's a common thing. If you lived in a city, you probably never experienced it. However, I have, and I have to admit, I've consumed snow that was just outside, and then, like, my friend's mom drizzled maple syrup on it, and I ate it. And you're like, is it good? Yeah, it's maple syrup. <laughs> it's like you're eating straight maple syrup. But is it, uh... Is it a good food? In the sense that, you know, is it like a meal? No, absolutely not. Not everything has to be a meal, I suppose. But I, I just in general, I think you probably should not be eating precipitation. I know that in the whole grand scheme of things, you know, thanks to like the water cycle, we sort of do regardless, but you shouldn't be in the habit of it is probably what I mean. It's a little strange, I'll give you that. I don't know if there's like a, a tradition behind it or something like that, but I don't. You know, people like I see this on Twitter sometimes, and you have to accept. Okay, by the way, like this is not meant to be an anti-American rant. It's just 
these are things you pick up living in Canada, next to, you know, like one of the proudest and uh, most, I wouldn't say insular necessarily, but what, let's say one of the proudest nations on earth, okay? Just to keep it semi-diplomatic here. Canadians know so much about America. I hate amnesia. I don't care about those other pills, let's just get the heck to safety. We know so much about America, you know, we consume probably primarily American media. Um, you know, you, you guys, for, for all the negative stereotypes about like, you know, food and television and stuff like that, you guys make the best movies, by and large, you know? Like, the Oscars are basically, like, best American movie most of the time. Or, like, British movies sometimes. They have... There's a category for foreign films. That tells you everything you need to know about the Oscars. You know? The Hollywood is amazing. Even if a lot of what they make is garbage. You know, you, you guys still make the best movies. Even if the Big Bang Theory came out of Los Angeles, you guys make the best TV shows, more or less. But, you know. I know that particularly British viewers are going to have an issue with that. No! Oh, my donation machine! And maybe you should. You know, I, I love Peep Show as much as the next guy. But, uh, still. I'm just throwing it out there. The U.S. does a lot of things right. We, we... A lot of your cultural exports are consumed in Canada. Let's just put it that way. But then I see, like, there will be people in the games industry. Uh, whether they're, you know, devs, PR, community management, streamers, YouTubers. They'll come to Canada and be like, I've been in Canada for three minutes and I still haven't seen milk in a bag. What gives? And I'm like, you're ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, but like, you know, what if, what if I told you that like the first thing you do when you go to Canada, it doesn't have to be making a joke about being in Canada. You know, it's like, you could get a little bit more personal, what if I said like, hey, uh, I'm in America for four minutes, I haven't even seen, uh, you know, a bald eagle yet, what gives? If you lived in, you know, Tennessee, you'd be like, there's no bald eagles. I don't drink milk in a bag. In Western Canada, we drink milk in cartons. Moreover, we don't drink milk. I mean, I don't drink milk at all, but in Canada, we don't drink milk out of bags. You weirdos. I'm not going to suck this up because it's a bad value to suck up. I'm going to suck these two up instead. Ooh, I like it. Um, the milk comes in a bag. They snip off the corner. You put it in a little plastic pitcher with a handle, and then you, you use it like that. I'm not saying it makes sense, you know, I, I I think the Cardin strategy is the best, and that's why, like, that's what we use in British Columbia, but at the same time, like... Like, you have to realize, if you live in America, and this is not meant to be rude, again, everybody knows more about your country than you know about their country. I know that sounds presumptuous, but really, everybody on Earth knows a lot about America, more or less, just because of, you know, the media you produce. And the, you know, you hold a, an important role on the world stage, without a doubt. Please don't kill me, I'm Ryan. So it just, so when you go to another person's country and you're like, you know, I've been in Warsaw for an hour and I haven't eaten a pierogi yet. It's because you, you know, I understand. You gotta, like, partition what you know about countries into like one or two things. It usually comes down to some kind of weird food peculiarity. Number of times I see people go, they're like, I'm in Canada for the first time doing it upright. And they got like a, a Tim Hortons coffee cup. I'm like, oh, you poor soul. It's not that Tim Hortons is necessarily not consumed by Canadians. Oh, my Lord. Because it is. But, like, for the last, like, 20 years, nobody's been like, Tim Hortons coffee is amazing. Everyone's been like, we, you know what people drink up here predominantly? Well, it depends where you are. But the answer may surprise you. It's probably either predominantly Starbucks or actually McDonald's. There's a little bit of Canadiana you might not have known. I wouldn't be surprised if McDonald's coffee is the most commonly consumed here. And it's because they bought out the coffee that Tim Hortons' old supplier used. And Tim Hortons has become, like, as a cost-cutting measure, they've started to use inferior products and, you know, like, frozen baked goods instead of freshly baked baked goods for, like, a long time now. But yeah, you know, if you want to know more about Canada, that's fine. But you got to understand, it's, it's, I don't take it as an insult. I mean that sincerely. I don't take it as an insult when I see someone post something like that. But you got to understand, it kind of reflects hilariously on you more than anything else. That's all I'm saying there. Dude, I think we want both of these. 
Oh, we can't take both of them, you idiot. But you still, you got the worst one, but still. We should have taken, I don't know why I thought I could take both. I got lulled into a false sense of security here. I don't know if we have spirit hearts, but I think we should go to the curse room regardless. Let's, let's pick up a red heart. If we lose our eternal heart, I don't really care. I'd prefer not to, obviously, but this run is, like, good regardless. Vey is quite good regardless. I would be playing that blood bank if I knew how much HP we had. Wow. I would be the same way, by the way. And I've, pr I've probably exactly done this, like, oh, I've been in Sweden for ten minutes, so I haven't eaten a meatball yet. But, like, I'm trying to, as I get older, I'm trying to curtail that stuff a little bit, because I'm like, people are living their whole lives here. And when I think of Sweden, I shouldn't think of meatballs, you know? I should think of the proud history of Gustavus Adolphus. I should think of Carolus Linnaeus and the invention of binomial nomenclature. When I think of Finland, I shouldn't just think of Timu Solani. I don't think we want to suck that up. I should think of, um, you know, their national identity. Proud fighting during the Winter War. And I mean, I don't know too much more about it, but I gotta stop. But this is where I turn the gaze inwards again. I gotta stop identifying countries based on capital cities and foods. <laughs> it's like the two easiest things to know about a country. I do get a little offended, and it's not like real offended, but I, I get a little. I find it. I'm incredulous. Let's put it that way. When I talk to my co-hosts and they don't know what the capital of Canada is, I'm like, we're your, we're your next door neighbor, and you don't know what our capital is. That's crazy. I think we want to use this first. That ended up working out okay. Like, learn a little bit about the world around. It can only benefit you to to feel like the world is a smaller place. I think. You know, is it? People have the idea, I suppose. Like. Is that actually relevant information? Probably not, unless you want to be on like Jeopardy someday, but I hate that excuse to not learn something. And, and you know, I probably use that excuse. I think everybody uses that excuse when it's convenient for them, but like, oh, is this gonna be on the test later? Maybe not, but you know. Is there, I think sometimes it takes more effort to not learn something than it does to learn something. You gotta send like a subconscious, no second secret room in. You gotta send a subconscious message to your brain that's like, Hey brain, don't push this into long-term storage, please. No secret room? No, oh, there is a secret room here. I should be listening more closely to that, but I am also talking over it on the regular. Nah, we don't need you. So this floor, like, we have we have started to roll completely. And I know you're probably going crazy. There's this tinted rock back here. Let's grab that. Ooh, that's a f we've gotten so many fewer... Uh, small rock payouts, so I'm extremely happy to see that. We will probably try to suck up these two items. Oh. Well, let's let's take a look in here. Right, we have chaos. Um, so these are not amazing. I don't really care about having the D1 and the Necronomicon effect. I much prefer to use Void as if it's a black rune, but I'll use black rune here so I don't suck those up. That became damage, luck, and speed. Um, and then I think I'll just take the mark here. And we'll head down. This run is looking so nice. And it's really, like, I think it's a, it's an easy rant. I've, I've come across a little more bluntly than I meant to. It's an easy rant to take offense to if you're from America. That's why I started it with all the compliments. And I mean that sincerely. Apart from Canada, the U.S. is definitely the country I spend the most time in. You know, we have family that live there that we visit on the regular. We went to America for Canadian Thanksgiving, you know? I don't love everything about the country, but uh, at the same time, I respect it. I pay homage to the, the sacrifices they've made on the world stage, and I respect that, you know, from a you know global standpoint, you guys have been on top for a while, and you know, you, when you're on when you're at the, on the top, you get people take shots at you. You know, I've seen it in the Counter Strike chat. Oh, American, want a cheeseburger? And I'm like, yes. I mean, I know you weren't ta talking to me, but, you know, at the same time, can I please have a cheeseburger? That's the, like, the sickest of all burns. That's how you know that they've got you. 
I also, I feel like I'm not, uh... What's the word? I'm not qualified to speak as if uh, I were an American. However, we're probably the people that get uh, mistaken for Americans the most. You know, when you look at us, we look like we're American when we talk, we sound American. And uh, oftentimes, you know, people just, whether rightly or wrongly, just assume you're from the United States when you're Canadian, and that's fine. This is, I, I didn't actually realize Bookworm was this close, but I'm stoked. Um, sure, I'll take a three cent homing bomb setup here, which also allows us to do this, and then, oh, seven cent ability to fly is nothing to sneeze at. We don't really want to suck up uh, Book of Secrets, I think, honestly. I'd rather save my charge. I don't really know where I'm going with this. I'm just saying, just like, for the rest of planet Earth's sake, just learn a little bit about the the way the people there actually live. Before it's like if I went to the United States and I was like, "Hello, America," and I posted a picture of like a Dunkin' Donuts cup, you, you wouldn't be offended, but you'd be like, no, "That's not even like that bad." But if I posted like, "I'm a true American now," it was a picture of a Dunkin' Donuts cup, you would be like, "What are you talking?" about? It doesn't make any sense. Do I just want to suck up go to Tammy's head? I don't think it matters. I'll suck up both of these. You'd be like, you don't get it. That's not what we're like over here. It's based on a, a, a like a, a muted assumption about what life is like. I see that tinted rock. I desire that tinted rock. Thank you. Anyway, I'm taking too much. I'm taking it too seriously. Is all I'm saying. It's just like I, I work with. Uh, people every day and I'm like these are cool people and then they come to Canada and they go wow where's the Tim Hortons and I go get out get out of my country by the way it's also over there <laughs> in most places <laughs> did you first off I'm sorry did you did you want some Tim Hortons oh you were just making a joke all right well you know what frig off then anyway So I, I like to make fun of Canada, though. We've got our own... Canadian cuisine is really weird. Because it's just American cuisine, but then we have poutine, which is actually a 10 out of 10. And if you are going to call it anything under a 6 without having consumed it, you can get out. But then we also have other uh, delicacies, like, you know, pouring snow on... Or pouring maple syrup on the snow. And I like, I, I literally cannot defend my country for that. We should not, that's like putting ketchup on sand and eating it. Except sand is not edible. But, you know, you kind of get the idea. It's not that, it's closer to putting ketchup on sand or just eating raw ketchup with a spoon than it is to, uh, like a normal food. Then we also have meat pies. That's a, that's a traditional food here. I know we didn't invent them. And it's more of a French-Canadian thing, but still. There's, there's other Canadian stereotypes, man. It's a cosmopolitan country. If we're gonna... Let's build some bridges here and dispel some stereotypes, okay? Canadians... I don't know if we consume more maple syrup than planet Earth. But I probably consume maple syrup once a year. At most. You know why? It's friggin' expensive. If I'm out at a breakfast place and I've, I've somehow managed to order a... A pancake or a waffle, which doesn't happen that often. I'll have some maple syrup, but I'm never buying it for home use because it's like... You know, $30 a liter. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's also probably, like, highly sensible, but... You know, uh, we need sad bombs. I love them. I hate to see number two go, because it would work really well with it, but so be it. We could have sucked them up, but we're, we're just killing it, dude. I don't consume that many, uh... I don't consume that much maple syrup on a daily... On a yearly basis. I, should, I probably consume, like, less than 100 milliliters of maple syrup annually. And I, same goes for, like, everybody that I know. Now, depending on where you live, that might change, but, you know. I'm trying to think of other Canadian stereotypes. Do we say sorry all the time? Yes. It's called being nice, having respect for the people around you. I will never apologize for the fact that we apologize, okay? I think that's part of Canadian culture. Do I watch hockey? Yes. I'm intimately familiar with the NHL. I follow the season fairly closely. I'm still holding out hope that... Brock Besser can pot 40 this year, maybe wrench back the Calder race from uh, 
New York Islanders phenom Matthew Barzel. But at the same time, if he wins, he deserves it. He's been three five-point games already this year. That's crazy. So, yeah. I don't know if there are any other Canadian stereotypes. There's probably some, but I... Some of them are valid, some of them aren't. We, I've, I've, I've said this in many episodes before, and I shouldn't do this because it's actually a treasonous act. But if you ever get in an argument... I only give you permission to use this as a Canadian if you're in an argument with a Canadian that's being a jerk, okay? If you ever want to just absolutely make a Canadian furious and you're an American, just suggest that the War of 1812 was a tie. That's like a deep part of our national identity is that, yeah, you know, America's definitely got a stronger military, but, uh, well, in the War of 1812, the only war with direct conflict between Canada and the United States, we burned down the White House. So, but in actuality, that did happen, but, and I hate to say this, Canadian friends, we weren't Canada at the time, we were, we were, we were still a British colony, so it was really like Britain burned down the White House. Using, you know, probably some of, some people who would eventually become quote-unquote Canadian, but, you know, Canada didn't become a country until 52, 55 years later, so you gotta, first, that's another thing you could use, but that, that's like a nuclear warhead, like, you can't come back from that. The other thing is, we didn't really win the War of 1812, it ended in kind of like a stalemate sort of situation, you know. Now, you might say that we won, because we weren't the aggressors, but I think that that's honestly kind of like a muted version of the events. I, I would say that it ended up being a stalemate. Anyway, so that's, I, don't use that willy-nilly, because you're going to lose friends. I've gotten into heated discussions about it. The War of 1812 is a deep part of national of Canadian identity. That and, like, Rush. <laughs> but not every Canadian likes Rush. A lot of Canadians are like, ah, you know, Rush is okay. We call them, uh, snowbirds. Uh, okay, 32 sad bombs that all have electricity attached to them. I like that. We don't need a devil card. We're gonna be moving real fast here. Uh, I don't necessarily wanna fight Hush. But I don't not wanna fight Hush. We do have Steam Sailor. Yeah, we do. Um... This is voidable for sure. So I think we void those and we'll go. Could we, oh, there's the battery charge. Even better. Um, I'm trying to see if like a single bomb would do it. Not quite finish the job, but dude, we the sad bombs with Jacob's ladder and static tears actually cover the whole arena, which is probably not the right word, but the whole area with the. Uh, with goodness. And by goodness, I mean electricity. Range increase. Look who we got our range on now. Um, okay. So, I mean, I again, I didn't really necessarily want to come down here, but... It shouldn't be too big of a deal. We'll get restock, which is unlikely to be too... Uh, valuable, but sure. It's not like a a huge ask. Uh, I think we do. We have any chance to become Guppy? If we don't, we might want to take Little Science, which is actually a Little Horn. Now here, I mean, we love Dark Bum. Do we have a battery charge? This this changes everything. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm actually just gonna go for raw stats. But let's see what we get here first. Cartridge is okay, I guess. We don't really need the money from Petrified Poop. Um. So, like, oh, there's a black market here. What is that, Lassie? There's a black market stuck in the well. Amazing. <laughs> I think we're not too, we have collar. Wait, no, we have collar. We did get ahead, and then this would be three, so we need that. Yeah, okay, good, good remember, good remembery. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Brain. Uh, now you guys, sorry. Dark Bomb's amazing. We just don't need it. We have, we're have, we set, basically. So we'll grab this, picked up another luck upgrade and shot speed. Not really a big deal, but... Uh, okay, let's let's move along. We might as well try this. It could be the Joker. 
In fact, we might as well like keep trying them. Because we're not doing... Oh, you know, buy, buy items. Like, seven bombs with sad bombs is lovely. Euthanasia. Diplopia. Oh, my lord. I don't even know what we do in that situation. Um, the thing is, we don't really want... Oh, we definitely don't want to void that. We'd love to see that, like, disappear, actually. So, uh, I don't even think we can void these. Uh, what are we going to do with Diplopia, then? Like, nothing, I guess. <sighs> If only I could, like, re-roll that somehow. I'm not missing out on an ability to re-roll that, am I? Anyway, we are unbelievably strong right now. I'm not gonna say, by the way, that we as Canadians uh, don't have ignorant stereotypes of other nationalities. I think we're able to hide in plain sight so many people, you know, they get irritated at other countries' uh, stereotypes of them that uh, they don't mind or they don't notice as much, let's say. But when I went to teach in South Korea, for those of you who are not aware, you know, it's not even about the Olympics necessarily, but South Korea is like a hyper-developed nation. It's a, easily a first world country. When I lived there, the city I lived in was substantially more technologically advanced and connected than the city I lived in in Canada, which was not Vancouver. It's kind of comparable to Vancouver, I think, but on an electronic level, at least, it was, like, way more switched on. It's, it's you know, let me just put it this way. It had a functioning, highly reliable subway system, and uh, in my hometown, if you wanted to take the bus somewhere, they came, like, every 20 minutes. So you, you tell me which country's more advanced. Anyway, the point is, when I went there, I was talking to people, you know, because, like, it's a big deal. Being, like, a, a 1920, well, I guess I was, like, 21. But being a 21-year-old and you're going to, you're, like, you're going to go live in Asia? I was talking to people, like, that my parents worked with, and they'd be like, have a fun time in Korea. By the way, just watch out for landmines. And I, like, would chuckle. I'd be like, that's easy. I get it. And they'd be like, no. Like, for real, they can't get, they, it's so hard to find them all. There's so many left over from the Korean War that, like... You, you might step on one. And I, you go to, like, downtown Seoul, a city with 20 million people. It's paved everywhere, and there's a touch screen on every parking meter. And you're like, oh, I, I really hope I don't step on a landmine outside of the H&M, you know? Like, I think on some level, we're all ignorant. Myself included. So, I'm not gonna go to delirium. I'm just gonna move onwards here number of times, and sometimes it was a joke, and I was like, "That's that joke is fine, except I've heard it a hundred times. And sometimes it was not a joke. The number of times people would be like, South Korea, right? Like, yeah, you can't go to North Korea. <laughs> it's like, it's it's a thing to get into North Korea. You gotta like, you first you go to China, and then you pay someone to give you a North Korean tourist visa, and then you're like, nobody's going to teach English in North Korea for like $1,500 a month, you know? Oh, it'll be a nice life experience. Yeah, maybe like for the rest of your life. But people, you know, they, they as you get older, and I, I truly believe this, and it's, it's half good and half bad. As you get older, I think your world gets a little smaller, you know? You, you worry, for most people at least. You worry about yourself, you worry about your family, your friends, your job, your community, maybe your state or province, your country, everything else, uh, Beyond that starts to fade away a little bit, and, and the world can kind of leave you by. So I don't necessarily take offense to it, but there, there's like a shocking degree of ignorance that I found. It's like you, I don't expect you to know this because you're 60, but you can't teach English in North Korea. You know what? <laughs> you know what North Korea is, right? Like. Dude, there are, um, this isn't even political, you know, in terms of, like, controversial things that we can discuss in these episodes, this ranks below anime as, like, the second most controversial thing that we can discuss on this show. But anyway, um, you know that there are, like, Americans who live in North Korea because they defected to North Korea during the Korean War. And I love reading the stories about them because it's so unique. It's like a once, not in a lifetime. Like, it's a once-in-human-history sort of thing. That you defected 
from the country that eventually won. No, I mean, like, I'm, this is, I guess, maybe a little bit political, but... Because um, that was a stalemate as well, but I think no one would argue, like... Wait, if you had to choose between one of the two countries, which one would you rather like? Let's just be honest. And then they're, like, 60, 70 years old now, and they've got to face the fact that, you know, they defected and are really losing the long con. But still, like, the government treats them really well because they're, like, a figurehead for propaganda. So they're like, oh, yeah, I love... I don't regret it for a second. And you're like, really? Like... I know that you can't say the opposite because you'll face repercussions, but come on. I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. I, it's actually like a very interesting uh, story. I, I forget the names of them, but you can look up like US defectors during the Korean War and like some of them are still alive. And it's, it's really like in a way, I wouldn't say I envy their experience, obviously, but it really is a unique human life. Like this is something that uh, very, very few people are going to experience for better or for worse. Probably for better that most people won't experience it. But anyway, just a unique perspective. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.